That violence touches the victim, their families, and the entire community, of course. Now, those victims end up at the mortuary. Funeral directors have seen far too many of those lives ended far too soon. RTV6's Derek Thomas has that story. 16-year-old Jalen Johnson was killed here in the 300 block of West 31st Street. He was a real person. He had hopes and dreams, but now he's a statistic. He lived with his grandmother, who was still trying to come to grips with his premature death. I got to bury my own grandson. That's crazy. It's really crazy, and these people need to just stop doing the violence if they're not ready to take the time. You know what I'm saying? They need to stop. That frustration is echoed at Lavinia and Summer's funeral homes where some of the victims are prepared for their final resting place. Almost on a daily basis, even last night, five shootings, and it just seems that there's no end, but, you know, uh, it's very difficult to just witness that and just... You just have to stay prayerful in the midst of that and just continue to pray for these souls and these, these children so they can be able to look towards something else and have something else to depend on opposed to a gun. How many friends do you have? The number of deaths and the perceived hopelessness has amped up mentoring programs at 100 black men of Indianapolis. They currently have a teen mentoring program with Indianapolis Public Schools. Successful black men spend time with students in the classroom. If we don't look at this as a opportunity currently to make our future better, then we're going to continue to see an overwhelming amount of young men enter into our correctional facilities because they haven't been taught, again, what it is to be a man. The days of violence will not end, but the community is hoping for fewer of them. They want to give peace a chance. Derek Thomas, RTV6.